Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Work with Brad Quima, Quima, Quima Varlick. We are seeing a little bit higher trade over in the grains, except for a few of the wheat contracts with the livestock futures trending lower. And let's talk about this cattle market here, Brad. Uh, why is the market not trading this higher cash trade news from last week? Well, thanks again for having me on, Michelle. But I would say we're still suffering from the gorilla in the closet. You know, the uh, the the fear of the unknown. In other words, you know, is there going to be more to talk about with the bird flu story? And, uh, you know, it seems like that's, uh, you can't just really put it to bed. I understand there's some, some uh, news that I really don't think is relative to beef necessarily, but it keeps it in the news and uh, talk about what I guess Canada not wanting to uh, or have restrictions on importing uh, some uh, of the dairy breeding cattle. I think they have to be lactating, but I can't imagine that there's a lot of that that happens, but whatever, uh, you know, but it's, it's another one of those little uh, news bites that um, algos and others uh, pick up on. Um, I would like to think that at the end of the day here, cash will make a difference. We finished pretty good, you know, as good as 187 in Western Nebraska. Uh, you could have easy got that in my neck of the woods. We decided to pass a uh, show list very small here and across Northeast Nebraska and up into Iowa up, up here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I, uh, I I think it's the, you know, fear of the unknown, but I, to me, the cash market's got some nice signs here. I, I know there's cattle that from Nebraska that have been bought to go down to Kansas, which you don't do that if they got enough cattle in Kansas. And I know the numbers are extremely tight in my neck of the woods. So let's see once if the fundamentals don't win out. I see June cattle just went higher for the day here while we're visiting. Okay. Well, that's good news. And of course, we're at a discount with the futures to the cash. And that's also been a little bit puzzling why we haven't been chasing the cash market. Right. It's not unusual. In fact, it'd be very normal to be a discount here in the first week of May, but okay. maybe not 10, you know, uh, 10 would be a little excessive. Seven or eight would be more like it. And then usually uh, by the end of June, we have convergence. So, but that's a long way away. Um, Unfortunately, typically what happens there is cash comes down to meet us. Now, I'm not sure that this time that's right. Uh, to me, there's still this persistence in the market, uh, incorrectly in my opinion, uh, that you know, based on some cattle on feed data that we have this wall of cattle that we were supposed to have already in the first quarter. If you remember September and October placements were um, very, very much bigger than expected. Well, apparently we're still feeding them. I don't think so. Uh, uh, you know, good people at the USDA, but I'm not sure that this time they got it right on the on the on feed numbers. They don't in the north. Uh, I, I, uh, otherwise, I'd, I'd be seeing them. So I, I think we're going to maybe find out that this discount um, is is too big. I And if you think of it as a feeder, you know, there was a while there where we were highly incentivized, OK, to feed these cattle bigger. The futures were a premium telling you it's going to get better. Uh, feeder cattle were high. Uh, corn had gotten a lot cheaper than it had been, at least. And then on top of it, we had this ideal springtime weather, um, maybe the nicest springtime to feed cattle in my part of the world that we've had in memory. Uh, from the middle of February all the way in through March, I mean, it was more like September and October kind of weather, uh, dry yards and mild temperatures. And these cattle performed. Um, so we'll see now, now that there doesn't appear to be as much incentive because of a discount structure, whether we don't get cleaned up here pretty quick. And Hey, it's Mother's Day in a week. This is, you know, we're doing, now we're going to embark on our, usually our really, really good time for demand. And I, I guess I expect demand will stay pretty good. Yeah. I want to talk about demand just briefly. Marketing year high for exports last week. So our international customers aren't backing away. And would the Packers be chasing this thing this hard as far as cash trade and trying to get cattle around them if the demand was not good? I, it sounds like you and I have been talking a long time because you're starting to sound like me a little bit, right? You know, um, I'm not as cynical as you, though. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> well, you, you're, you're uh, more politically correct, I would guess, right? I'm uh, trying to be PC, yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what the Packers think of me. I already know. Um, so I, I think you make an excellent point. Um, and let me piggyback that with, uh, you know, if they've got meat sold, that, that they would become much more aggressive, right? Uh, the futures have become... Um, unreliable. Uh, the old days, I, I can remember, you know, you would, uh, a packer would be long futures in a discounted structure like this. You know, if they got meat sold, they'd say, well, great hedge. Why wouldn't I buy June cattle at 176? If I got to pay 187 in the country for cattle, I'll buy that and that'll be my way of 
you know, balancing inventory. Now the basis has become so unreliable that not even the Packers are using it. So the other thing would be, you don't suppose that these average weights have changed means that they get to know mm. that two weeks before we do, you know, is that another reason that they've gotten so aggressive here in the last little while? Well, we, well, we shall see. I, I get a lot of demand questions. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what demand is going to be. Nobody does. Um, that's why we work so hard on the supply side. I, my hometown, I drove through last night and they're advertising ribeyes for 10 choice ribeyes for 1099 a pound. I don't think that I'll have any trouble moving them. It's the right time of year for it to happen as well. So I, I you know, people are worried about, you know, uh, inflation. So am I, um, but at this point, I don't see any uh, clear signs anyway that that there's been a big shift. Um, I, I think we'll be. I think we're fine. I think it's the time for the Packer to have some trouble. There's just so much in this pie. He's going to get a smaller slice for a while, and the producer's going to get a bigger slice. I think. All right, and real quick, and then I'm going to get off my soapbox. Yeah. These tests that we're waiting for from FSIS on muscle cuts in terms of HPAI. They're not going to come back with anything, I don't think. I mean, the likelihood of finding it in meat is going to be pretty small, isn't it? Uh, that is my understanding as well, Michelle. And uh, let's okay. go ahead and get this testing over with and get it behind us. I, I, you know, remember, trust the science. I got so sick of hearing that during the COVID thing. But, you know, they tell me biologically or physiologically, whatever the right word is for your scientists out there, that it would be an extreme surprise to find it in the muscles. Um, so... Let's go with that. Let's let's we've got a safe product, an excellent product, um, and let's get our consumer back on our side with confidence that they can eat it. A little pressure in the hogs initially. Do you think um, that's the futures premium to the index holding the market back, or is that market kind of tied to what's cat, what the cattle market's doing? I think a couple of things. One thing is that, that there it does, you know, when you rally cattle, it seems like it's hard to it's hard to rally both of them. There's some algorithms that just love trading that cattle hog spread, which still slays me, actually. But um, and, and then the nature of what you're trading there. Um, I've said this a few times, but if you if you are too young to have ever traded pork bellies, guess what? This is how they trade it. Extreme volatility. Um I mean, like seven, eight dollar moves without, you know, looking just zip, zip, zip. Um, we're very close to the 100 day moving average on June cattle, right? Or June hogs, rather, right here. We're oversold, very, very oversold. Uh, we still think supply tightens up a little bit as we move into May and June. Um, obviously, you, you can tell, I, I, I think we're about there. Um, a sloppy looking chart. Uh, we took out those uh, March lows last week, which is disappointing. And today again, of course, but. I don't know. Uh, I guess we're carrying a bit of a premium, but typically we do because we always rally cash hogs in May and June. So let's get up and go out of here. I, I think the market's overdone to the downside. Good. Let's talk about the grains here. Um, as we speak, pretty much everything is now back to the plus side. Grains have, whether this has been a weather rally on South American weather or whether it's just fun short covering, do you think it can keep going? We did get July corn above the 100 day moving average finally. Yeah, we're we're doing a little bit of some good things here. Technically, absolutely. I think I think it's weather, and I think it's two kinds of weather. I think it's a se severe flooding in, in South America, uh, right. but I think now it's a it's a delayed planting thing here too, a little bit here in our part of the world. Um, you know, with big rain scheduled here for tonight, um, and you know, I, I we'll see what this afternoon's planting progress. But I would have around here it was kind of a standstill. Nothing happened for a week. Um, so I, I would guess, you know, we've got a little bit of that too late to plant thing. I would think most of us would remember 2019. Uh, and I say that with uh, caution. Um, that was a year we knew stuff didn't get planted. Basically, South Dakota didn't hardly plant at all. Western Iowa had a lot of trouble. Um, and yet it took a long time uh, for the data to catch up to reality. In fact, it took over a year. Um, so I, I, I would say I would be. I'm going to caution the producer here to don't be a little bit careful about getting bullish that it's too wet to plant. We usually get it planted. Um, I, you know, I, I'd say November beans up here, that old high 12, 16, we're within a couple, you know, we're within a nickel of it. Um, I'd, I'd be more inclined to sell it than buy it here. Uh, I think the whole world would sell these corn at 502. Uh, I would get a little bit ahead of that uh, myself. Um, okay. So I would use this rally if I was a hedger, uh, if I was a producer, uh, to do something here uh, with the idea that, uh, hey, it's our planning 
planning rally. This is not unusual to, to, to spike it a little bit this time of year. Now, we get through this weather, and then the next round of weather looks a lot better. You know, we can plan a lot in a hurry. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, that, that news is old news that it's too late. Yeah, no doubt. The only difference is the funds are really short yet in this market. So that can you're, you're right. And they can make water run uphill uh, for a little while. But, uh, yeah. you know, I would say still I'd be a little bit careful. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Brad Coima with Coima Coima. I like that is market.